So uh, who wants to do the intro? Hey, Clay, Clay, you've got that. You've got that soft, uh, soft voice. Sensual voice. Yep. <laughs> what what number are we on? Six or seven? Oh boy, they don't <laughs> even know. Let me check the YouTube. I have what? no idea. I think on YouTube. We called last five or six. So. Yeah, five or six. Uh, it it's uh it's funny that who is it? Um, JD Webb. He's messaged Paul a couple of times. One about airing the podcast. One about covering our races or whatever. And then, uh, you know, if he could just look at like the titles of the podcast or look at them or like look at the screenshot that I use or like the still image or, and it's just like, don't even know what number it is. Fucking. <laughs> so yeah, we don't even, this guy's more interested in, in airing it than we are. Yeah, by far. That video is crazy, by the way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? The guy starts beating him with a stick. It, it's great because you're watching another primate. You, you know that like kids are watching this too, and that's that brings joy to my heart. Did you see this video that Layla posted on on YouTube? No. It said Travis Pastrana visits Langley Speedway, and evidently Travis Pastrana number nine hosted a session at the new Langley Speedway really early this morning for the K and M Pro Series cars. This is uh, something she uploaded. Uh, over a year ago. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see this thing she just posted last fucking, <laughs> fucking <August>? June? <laughs> I thought it was, you know, it was showing up in my feed, so I thought it was, you know, some fucking some new shit, but it's not. He was testing at Darlington the other day, though. I think one, I think you might have posted that, Jesse. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, I saw it on Instagram, and then it made its way around Facebook and everything. It's pretty neat. I will say that uh, uh, when I pra- I practiced with David Gilliland on Friday, and then he finished second. So, you know, coincidence? I don't think so. Yes, <laughs> very much so. Uh, uh-uh. I taught him taught him a couple. I showed him a couple of things. Yeah, that did, must uh, be. did anyone besides Jesse see my post on Facebook today on the Sarah page? Did you, Paul? Uh, no, but I'll go take a look. I think Paul doesn't see a lot of this stuff because I get wait no. I don't know if it will notify Paul or if it just notifies once to the group because I'm also set up as like co-admin or content creator and it every time somebody even farts thinking about Sarah, I get an alert. Yeah, and if you check out the notification first, it'll probably go away for Paul if he's not checking his computer right there. Yeah, I got you, Clay. Talking about doing a super speedway race. Yeah, me and Derek did one tonight. Yeah, we might do something. We got a couple off weeks coming up here in a couple weeks, so. Well, I mean, I didn't even say it had to be officially through Sarah. I mean, I just said I would host one. I just wanted to get a bunch of our guys together. Okay. I even told Derek, maybe we can get your ass out there. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I tried talking him into just practicing with us sometime. He wouldn't do it. He's, he's scared. He's scared. I said I'd be really surprised if we just showed up one week and Paul's out there practicing during the, the outlaw practice. <laughs> I said I'd be I'd be surprised too. <laughs> Probably be going the wrong way. You got to come up with a with an alias, Paul. Like you got to take like your middle name and then the street that you grew up on, and then you already use that for porno. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Paul was that Chase Rodman guy. Maybe Paul was out there messing around. Yeah, I was me. That explains a lot. Right. <laughs> uh, I think we are on episode. Let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five. So this is six. We're officially on six. Yep. I like it. So, uh, Clay, if you want to do the honors. Okay. And just so you know, I'm jerking off. So go ahead. All right. Welcome to Sarah Podcast Number Six, hosted by Paul. Fuck up! I forgot your goddamn last name, Paul Miles. Let's start this over. <laughs> that well is done. your last name, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Sarah Podcast Number Seven, hosted by it's Six. Lee Ged- we just gave one. 
<laughs> All this is, is staying in, too, by the way. That, that last five-second clip was six, and now we're on seven already. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Sarah Podcast number six, hosted by league admin Paul Miles and racer of the 81 car, me, Jesse Potter. <laughs> With a new guest tonight, the uh, number 51. Matt Rolf, waiting for me to join in. No, I just stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> and we got somebody else here. Clay Snyder. Snyder. <laughs> I don't get a car number? Nope, you don't have one. God damn it. Actually, officially the 38R. Yes. Oh, yeah, that never made it onto your paint scheme, but that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Fuck it. He's only oh. rookie of the season, man. That's cool. Paul didn't even know you had a new paint scheme, so that's no big deal. No, I figured it out tonight. What did you have tonight? What was it? Was it different? It's that AFCO one I've had for the last three or four weeks. Oh, yeah. I, I always, whenever I see you or uh, Justin in the mirror, I always, I I keep thinking that yours, that you both have one that says Asus on it. Well, mine does as well. Oh, okay. So. Smaller. <laughs> All right, good. So I can read. <laughs> no, that's just a coincidence. What is AFCO? Uh, they make racing shocks. One of my buddies works for him. That's pretty for, shocking. Yeah, it is. Tell him to throw some money our way, man. Yeah, right? I doubt that it will happen. Tell him to give us some free shocks. <laughs> for our Sims? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Shall I take some t-shirts to hand out? You know, I mean... <clears throat> um, what was I going to say? Nah, probably nothing. I think we would be remiss if we didn't start the show by congratulating Chris Roberts and his wife. Uh, what's her name? Laura? Lauren? Lauren. 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 <laughs> Lauren. Uh, dude, I was close. You were, yeah, you were in the neighborhood. Yeah, I was in, I was at a ballpark. But uh, <laughs> congratulations to them on their daughter born about three hours before the street stock race that he won on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went back to the hospital to be with them. <laughs> back to the hospital. <laughs> I, I'm on my way home from work, and I, I get a uh, message. I get a uh, Facebook notification on my on my phone, just says I'm racing. <laughs> I, I liked whoever brought up that he was actually probably still at the hospital using the EKG monitor as the uh, as his monitor and all that. Yeah, that was me. Oh well, one that's funny. Spotting for him. <laughs> and there was also I said because um, his daughter's name was Carly, and I was like, yeah, I figures that the first. First, le- th- first three letters of her name spell out car. <laughs> I'm just wondering when he's gonna have her in a uh, in a bandolero. Give her about two years. <laughs> where we'll was he in a tonight? Car before she walks. Do you mind know where he was tonight? I think he was just yeah, he was just uh, baby stuff. I think he knows that he would have been killed by his wife if he if he had a race tonight when his wife yeah. and newborn were home. He'd have been murdered. I would have thought oh, he'd been be... murdered on Tuesday instead of tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I'm shocked he, uh, I'm shocked he ran Tuesday night. To be honest, I figured, I figured tonight was going to be the first race back for him. I wasn't expecting to see him Tuesday. Our first official Sarah baby. Yeah, right. <clears throat> is is it really? Yeah. It feels like it feels like everybody's pregnant, having babies, like. Left and right, left, right, and center. It's like you I can't you can't go anywhere without bumping into somebody that's pregnant these days. Well, bump it into them so they get pregnant. So maybe <laughs> that's the problem. so I don't know. What do you what do you boys want to talk about? We got a bunch of shit to uh, cover. I'm just trying to finish this pizza. How was it? Pretty fucking good. Left over from lunch today. Where nice. is it from? Domino's. I love Domino's. Can't go wrong with Domino's. We don't have Domino's around here. Really? Yeah, I can't get Domino's. There are like nine local joints that I can order from, but we've got a Papa John's, and that's it. We don't have Pizza Hut or Domino's or any of those big names. Does you your 
Go ahead. And usually I like the smaller places. I like the, the little mom and pop places. Those usually have their own kind of unique flair on them. But I like Domino's a lot too. Does your Domino's have that uh, jalapeno cheese breadstick dip and stuff? <clears throat> um, you mean like diarrhea in a can? Yes. <laughs> yes. That stuff is delicious. Diarrhea in a can. That stuff is delicious. <laughs> These two things do not compute. <laughs> Give you some wicked ring sting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <clears throat> and, and who did you say wants to broadcast this shit show? What? Who did you say wants to broadcast this shit show? I don't know. Somebody's like, somebody's oh, obviously not paying attention. Were you talking to me? No. Oh. Fuck meant... it. We'll do it live. <laughs> I meant to. Uh... Well, I guess I'll talk to Paul about that later. Some undisclosed info. Dun dun dun. Uh... Um, so yesterday, well, actually what happened, so Thursday, uh, Chris won street stocks. Where was that at? Was that Oxford? Tuesday. No, it was US, that was USA. USA, yeah. That was fun. I like the new, the, uh, took a while to get the feel of it, but the new USA looks really nice with the new textures on it. Yeah. That was, that was kind of a shit show, man. We ran, uh, more than half the race under yellow. I was surprised for USA. Yeah, that's true. I, I think it was... The, it felt a little weird on the new... I don't know if they redid any of the physics of the track itself or anything, but it did feel a little weird. It took a little bit of getting used to. Yeah. And then... Uh, so that was Tuesday, and yesterday was the 75 lapper at New Hampshire. That was that was fun. I had, that was fun. I did not expect to win that, because at one point I think I was second to last. Yeah. And no, then, you definitely had a good run there. That was good. Yeah, some, it was good. Some real good uh, pack race in there. Good battle for third for a long time. Yeah. I watched the replay tonight because I, um, I wanted to see what you guys were talking about. So I watched the replay and it was pretty good. I had to. It was like 15 to go. I think I just turned off like all my driver chat. I just turned everything off. So I was like, man, if I start listening to what these people are saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna overdrive it every single turn. <laughs> So I had to turn all that off, and I had Derek like talking to me, and I was like, "Man, I got, I got my shit's off." <laughs> yeah, and it, dude, Justin had a had a rocket in his ass because he he was pulling you in. If he had maybe ten more laps, he probably would have had something for you. Yeah, definitely. He was catching you catching you by two tenths a lap, I think it was. Yeah, I I started once I was pretty confident, like two or three to go, that as long as I just kind of kept it on the track, that he wasn't gonna be able to get me. I kind of slowed up the pace a little bit just to make sure that I didn't overdrive it or miss my t- miss my marks or anything like that. So I kind of took a little bit off just because I always do it. Anytime I'm having a really good run, I just fuck it up. So so I didn't this time. And well, I won. First win since uh, <laughs> mid-February for you. Yeah, it was my first ever late model win. I've never won in a late model, not anything, I don't think. Well, that's because we've, we've had a lot of Chris Roberts and Justin Rose now in the uh, late mods. Yeah, I don't even, I mean, like, not even, like, iRacing series or anything. That was first one, period. But, yeah, that was, it was... Tough. I was impressed. Yeah, I mean, it was... Derek and I, we had practiced on it, I want to say, Tuesday night? Tuesday night, I think, before the street stocks, we were dicking around on it. And it was a lot of fun. We were working on a little bit of a setup together, and we were just running together, and... We just rough housing a little bit, you know, bumping each other and getting each other loose, and it was, it was a lot of fun. So I was like, man, that's probably gonna be a sweet race because the track is big and the turns are big, where you don't have to dive it, you don't have to drive it in hard, and you don't have to get hard on the brakes or anything. So there's plenty of room to to do what you got to do. Yeah, I tried messing around with some setups because uh, the Can Am guys have had a few test sessions up, and uh, I joined a couple of those and doing some of my own. And for some reason, I just can't figure out the setup there. Um, I tried doing some things that we do in real life on my dad's late model and some of the spring packages that we've used uh, don't quite work in here. But, well, not, not with the setup I tried anyways, but uh, put some to the gut, something together that was pretty decent and wasn't anything special. But if we can, like Clay was up there running in that pack, and if I hadn't wrecked myself, I would have been right there too. But if we can just hang around in the pack, we can get decent finishes out of it. Um, I'm excited to see what we can get, get on there with uh, 24 guys out there racing around. It should be fun. 
yeah, I'm excited for the next Thursday. I want to see see how we look then, and then of course see who gets into the Sunday show. <clears throat> That'd be fun. I'm really excited for next week. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm I'm nervous. Like I, you know, before we start, I was telling the guys like I'm starting to get into promoter mode, and and I really enjoy the race when I'm watching it on replay. But it's it's going to be a fun night. It's going to be a real good real good time. That E T V or whatever whatever it's called. Can you see those after they've aired, or is it only when it's live? Uh, they'll have it live, uh, maybe with like a 10-second delay or something like that, but they'll save the replay and hand it out afterwards. So okay. Uh, I'm sure they'll give it to Greg or someone over there because they do a lot with ETV anyways, but I'm sure one of those guys will get it and we'll make sure it's saved and hand it out to everyone. Okay. I think uh, I think they're a little delayed like live because I remember racing in the Can-Am finale last year and – I think I was about five laps ahead of where my dad was watching it. He was te- uh, he was texting me on my phone. He's like, "It was a caution came out." He's like, "Don't pit, don't pit." And I had already stayed out. I was like two laps. We're about to go green flag. <laughs> <laughs> is your dad gonna be watching? Uh, is your dad gonna be watching uh, next Sunday show? Uh, probably. Well, it's kind of uh, no, it's not late. I was thinking it was one of our times at eleven, but it's the earlier race. So, yeah, he'll be he'll probably be watching. Hey, do you do you crew for your dad? Because your dad runs the ACT tour still, right? Technically, he's not running the tour anymore. He sold both of his late models. He's building some. Uh, he's building a super late model for him and another guy to kind of run uh, both part time. Um, what was the first question? Probably <laughs> crewed for him. Oh yeah, I'm always there at the track when he's racing, ninety five percent of the time. So I think there are a couple. Right guys I think there might be a couple guys in the league that might be interested in uh, running one of those super lates when uh, when when uh, Ricky Rolf's not in, not behind the wheel. I'll have to uh, keep that in mind. I'll let him know. I think uh, I think Mike one day was like, you know, if he doesn't want to race sometime, I'll be there. <laughs> well, we talked about it. He was trying to get a, get a ride together for that uh, for that four cylinder tour that runs up in New England. Northeast Mini Stock Tour. Yeah, yeah. He was trying to put together a ride for that and just uh, ran out of time before the season started, but. Uh, he he really wants to get behind behind some real steel wheel. Real steel wheel. Yeah, like like what I did there. It's uh, what is that? Alliteration. It is. I'm a big uh, fan assonance. of alliteration. I forget which one it is. It's alliteration. Alliteration, isn't that? Is it? I thought that was like a vowel sound. Yeah. yeah. No, whenever you start multiple words in a series with the same with the same sound. All right, so yeah. Aston, you know what? It, this isn't an English lesson, so. No, it's not. <laughs> I got bored already with that one. <laughs> <clears throat> the uh, Matt, you know when the real uh, Oxford 250 is? Um, It's usually in July. Um, it's like July 20 something, I think, this year. Something like that. It's usually the 20 range. I'm looking it up right now on my computer. Obviously, we're on here on my computer. Um, Sunday, July 21st. And then the cup race, or the New Hampshire race, is that the weekend after? The weekend before, July 14th. Okay. Mm. I, usually, I don't know if it's the same way this year, usually the cup guys have a week off, the week of the 250, because they've had... Um, they usually have people like Kyle Busch or Brad Kozlowski. They've had a few Cup guys come run the 250. So I don't know if the Cup guys have a week off again this year. I don't know if they've announced anything yet with that. But normally the guys at Oxford try to get some Cup guy to show up. Yeah, it was Trevor Bain last year, wasn't it? Yeah, he struggled. <laughs> yeah, it's probably just like here, here's ten thousand dollars from like his from the track. Just, you know, just come turn laps. Yeah, there's some of the guys that have shown up like. Uh, Usually when Harvick came once, he came to race. He brought his own car. Um, Kyle Busch brings his own stuff. He comes to race. There's been a few other guys that come for the appearance and for the show. Um, We had Kenny Wallace in one of my dad's cars. I think it was either 2009, 2010, one of those years. Um, He was definitely there for the show. He showed up late Sunday morning. He missed the first practice. He, uh, He was a good guy, but... As far as racing goes, he was just there for the show. Um, of course, during the 250, we pit in the infield, and something happened electrically with one of the wires or something that came loose. And instead of just coming down pit road in the infield and get, having the crew take a look under the hood, he 
pit it out in the back pits, and once you go out there, you're kind of done. But he pit it back there. He uh, he changed right out of his clothes. He was out of there before we got back across the track after the race. <laughs> That's kind of shitty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll probably be the last time he gets a phone call for that. Yeah, we actually... Um, my dad was contacted about letting Trevor Bain drive one of his cars last year, and my dad said the only way he's doing it is if the guy's there to race, if they have... I don't know if if there's planning ahead with that stuff rather than just have them show up and be there for the show. Yeah, I I would imagine that you know your dad as a car owner would get would get a little bit of the action on uh on one of the guys coming in, but still he's he's got he's he's looking to win it because that's that's a big time show up there, so it means something to uh, walk home with a with a win, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Twenty five thousand a win and a hundred dollars per lap you lead. So if you lead every lap, it's fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, for a late model show. That's not, not a bad payday. <laughs> <laughs> the year I went to, when Kurt or Kyle Busch did it, he did the uh, the <coughs> the ACT race before it, or no, he did the pass race and then the, the yep. two fifty, and he then swept uh, him. Yeah, and he like we went down into the pits and he had. He had like two crews working. He had fucking he he was there. You could definitely tell he was there to race. He wasn't there just to turn laps. He was. Oh yeah, he was there to race. He brought his own. The super late model was his own car. I think he had someone else build the uh, the late model, the ACT car, but didn't matter. He swept it. <clears throat> yeah, it was. I remember during the uh, the past race, it looked like somebody might have. He kind of fallen back a little bit, and uh, but you could tell. All right, it, once it once laps were taken down, there was like twenty to go. He just pushed the go button and... Yeah, he flipped the switch and went. Yeah, you could just kind of tell that, you know, for a while he kept it kind of close. You know, he kind of fell back a little bit and let some people by. So you weren't, you I mean, you weren't sure if he was just, if he was letting people by or if they had gotten by him or whatever, but yeah. Right. <clears throat> and yes, uh, a week off from Cup that weekend, so there might be a chance there's a Cup guy at that race. That'd be sweet. Now, how, how does that work? Does uh, would like Roush Racing give give a car owner a call and say, "Hey, I've got one of my boys wants to run a race," and you know, put a little put put a little coin in their pocket for it, or would uh, would an owner go out and try to find a cup guy that, that's interested in running? Uh, I think the way they've done it in the past is the owner of the track has uh, pursued the drivers. Um, I think with the Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch deal, they they run short track stuff, anyways, especially Kyle Busch. So I think he he showed up and raced his own thing. But I think with the uh, some of the other guys, they get paid to come for the show. How how worth it is it for the track? Though I mean, are are people coming out to see the Cup guys run the show, or is it just part of just kind of a, a nice old bonus? Um, depending on the driver, it definitely helps out in the crowd. Um. The first year they switched it from pro stocks back to ACT late models. They had, I want to say, 80 cars try to qualify, and they had three cup guys show up for that race, and the stands were absolutely packed. Um, since then, the numbers have kind of gone down a little bit, but they're also getting drivers like Trevor Bain and uh, Kenny Wallace and a few other guys like that. Um, it depends on the drivers. Travis Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Kraft. <laughs> Travis Miller's that guy you always see in the forums who's like trying to put a truck team together. He's like 17. He's trying to start a uh, camping world, world series team. He posted this thing in the uh, the NASCAR section of Reddit that I spend almost all like every day on. He put po- he posted a thread in there like, hey, how do I uh, how do I get started? You know, I want to want to how do I contact teams and shit like that? And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, if you don't know how, if then... you don't know how, you're not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> and those things, like especially especially when you get into big time like nobody's full-time job is owning uh is owning a car team like that's something you do because you've been real successful at something else and you can piss away money racing cars right <clears throat> like a uh, fucking yeah <laughs> yeah that guy that guy <laughs> that fucking guy I mean, God bless him. He's he's always hilarious whenever he posts, and he's uh, he's, he's kind of turned into his own meme on the message board. It's always whenever somebody whenever somebody says something that even remotely relates to 
being involved in, you know, top flight racing. So I always paging Travis Miller. <laughs> it's always good for, for an LOL. So, uh, is there, um, you said there was, you said there was lots to discuss. I'm trying to think of anything that any new developments for the all-star race or anything that, uh, we haven't discussed. Well, I think, uh, I, man, I, Matt, I'm sure, hasn't had time, but he said he was going to figure out who is locked into a top 10 spot, and uh, we'll probably have something to release here in the next day or two with that. Um, I'm thinking, uh, you know, Matt, Matt proposed the idea of using the Can-Am series claim your, claim your caution rule, where uh, if you uh, initiate the yellow flag incident, you get an EOL, um, kind of an incentive for guys to run clean. Um, cause we had, Jesse, I don't know if you'll quit the session yet, but during the, uh, during a Wednesday night race, Matt and I spent a lot of time talking about ways to, to protect, uh, protect the racers, to protect the guys on track and keep it a clean race. That way, you know, nobody, nobody goes spin to win, uh, for all the marbles. And, you know, we kind of, um, we're kind of thinking the, uh, Can-Am, uh, claim your, claim your caution rule and then. You know, I think we're just going to be set at an automatic DQ if we if somebody dumps a leader to win the race. So, just uh, just some stuff like that. Yeah, and with the claim the caution rule, this obviously sometimes there's stuff with uh, it's just racing incident, and so if no one wants to claim it, normally in the KM series, the guys that are admitting they're also in the race, so it's hard for them to review it during the race. But if we if we have Paul or whoever up in the in the booth. Um, and no one wants to clean the caution. That's something that they could look at and say, "Oh no, that was just a racing deal," or if it was something stupid, then they can give an EOL. But just uh, I feel like the claim your caution rule, especially for this event, will just make it so you got to run clean because if you get in the back of someone and you wreck them, you're gonna go to the back and then your chances are done. So it's just a way to keep the, everything clean. And uh, we discussed a little bit about what happens at the end if uh, the guy in second wrecks, wrecks the guy in first and. That's going to be a hard call to make, but if it's one thing, it is a racing deal. But if there's something, uh, if something, if, if the guy in second drives a little too hard to make the pass and he wrecks the guy, then that's going to be up to them to call it. But we're just trying to make it so it's a clean race, uh, keep the cautions down, that kind of thing. Whatever we got to do to uh, make that happen, and that's kind of why I added 15 minutes of the qualifying session. So once everyone's qualified, we can go through all this stuff with everyone, just to make sure they all know. Yeah, we also, um, I forget who it was, but somebody somebody put up the idea of having a, having a third person in race control that's neutral, either somebody that's run run both series and is a series regular for both for both leagues, or somebody who hasn't run any of the anybody's races and is a complete neutral party. Um, I think I, I think I mentioned maybe like a Jeff By somebody that somebody that has some credibility on the service and you know, hasn't really been involved in either show and, you know, could be, could be a nonpartisan kind of right down the, right down the middle kind of guy. Cause I know like, I, I'm not, I know I wouldn't want to be biased towards our guys, but you know, I, I wouldn't want, I really want to avoid any perception of bias in, in the, uh, in um, decisions like that. And especially if it comes down to like, you know, if, Greg Netherwood and Justin Rosenau are, you know, running one and two, and one of them dumps the other. You know, it's going to be me and a can am guy in race control, and you can imagine what kind of shit show that'll turn into. No, he did it. No, the other guy did it. No, he did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I want to, I, I really want to hope that both, that all twenty four guys on track are going to want to run a clean race and put on a good show because I think. A lot of people are paying attention to what we have going on, and it's a, and it's a lot of good publicity for both shows. But you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of money and a lot of prizes on the line, and you know, guys might get in might get into turns a little bit harder than, than they usually would trying to trying to make a pass. You know, guys guys are going <laughs> to think the doors open when it's not. So it's uh, we're we're gonna have to we're hoping we're hoping for the best kind of show, and and I'm trying to prepare for the, for a complete fucking gong show. <laughs> And hope that it just stays clean. Who's the, who's going to be our announcer for on uh, ETV? Do we know that? Um, I got to talk to Greg about 
if he's talked to them lately or if we can get their email or something because there's a few other things that we need to go over with those guys just in case. Um, but we don't know for sure yet. Another thing we have to talk to them about is the whole invert thing. I know me and you have talked about it, Paul, about hoping to get some type of a Twitter thing up or some way that people who are watching can vote and do it that way. Um, that's another thing we have to discuss with those guys. <clears throat> you still with us, Clay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so how was how was Talladega? You haven't. Um... Why don't you humor us all with some with a couple stories from your race weekend? Okay. I mean, um, if if you want to, I don't want to. Where yeah, to begin? Well, rained a ton. Was really surprised they were able to get both races in. Uh, we left the track Sunday because I didn't think they were going to start again because it was like four hour delay. Yep. Um, listened to it on the radio back at camp, but uh, sounds like that finish was pretty awesome Saturday's race was great uh, good time a lot of uh, a lot of drunks including us uh, with as cold as it was and as uh, wet as it was I thought it'd be a down year for um, the opposite sex skin being shown you know but uh, <laughs> I was wondering actually, how- Actually, one of the best I've ever been to, with uh, as far as that goes. In terms of TD count. Yes. <laughs> I was wondering how you were gonna how you were gonna word that. The puppies were off the leash. Yes, they were. <laughs> like moms, it. moms and daughters alike. Mom in the front seat driving, and uh, daughter in the back seat showing her tits. <laughs> I like it. Well done. Big fan of that. Yep. My dad, Always classy. My dad says that uh, when he went to a, he's been to Talladega at least once. I'm not sure, maybe more than once. I don't know, but he says whenever he goes to Talladega, he sees more titties there than he does at Mardi Gras. Yeah. <laughs> and, believe, and believe me, he's looking too. He keeps track. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps, keeps a keeps score. Yeah, he keeps a mental tally. <laughs> hey Jesse, have you been to the Saturday Night Show at Oxford? Not the race, but the actual other show. Uh, that's actually I've never actually. Uh, I don't think I've been to a 250 since I was pretty young. I've been to oh. last couple of years that my dad and I went. We did the uh, the pass race the day before, and uh, but this year we'll do the 250 since it's now a pass race. Usually after the Saturday night show, there's uh, some events out in the parking lot, a little show out there. Oh yeah, yeah usually not the most attractive ones, but they're out there. <laughs> We've stuck around for that. <laughs> my dad brings this huge spotlight and everything. Oh yeah, you mentioned that. That's right. <laughs> Well, you should do it. You should get a couple uh, whiteboards and score them. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Two, get off the stage. Yeah, right. It would be, we wouldn't need more Two, than this. Hold them back up. The numbers <laughs> might go up to about five and they'll stop there. We don't need a 10. <laughs> do a handstand or something, you know. <laughs> Let's put some life in those. They all think they're uh, Playboy bunnies, though. Oh, yeah. And you know what? In in their defense, if they've got them, we want to see them. Oh yeah. I'm, we we I'm may equal, not want to see them twice, but we want to see them. I'm an equal opportunity tit viewer. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why we we respect you. You're fair and you're even. Now I do hold the ability to say put those back up, but I'll still look. Well, you gotta look. I mean, otherwise, how are you gonna how are you gonna know if they're worth if they're not worth anything if you don't look? That's right. <clears throat> that got off topic pretty quick. Yeah. Well, well welcome to Sarah Podcast. <laughs> I'm Excuse looking through uh, I'm looking through dirt racing photos from a company I used to work for, and this guy this guy's running a uh, a dirt outlaw, and he's got a Ferrari badge on it. That nice. can't be right. Seems legit. Oh, we had uh, 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 Layla joined us for the first time in forever. Yeah, she back on track. She raced with us Tuesday night. Had a good run too, if I remember right. Yeah, I think that she did. I don't remember where she finished or even where I finished, but she ended up seventh. I have it open. 
Yeah, you didn't race with us Tuesday night, Matt. No, I've only done two races with you guys. Yeah, I know. How come two you races, didn't? two poles. Usually, yeah. Uh, hey, Chris. <laughs> last few, um, last few street stock races, I want to say you were there, except for this week. No, I think I missed the last couple weeks, anyways. Oh, you just have that white fifty-one. Yeah. Nothing on it. I don't even think it was fifty-one. I think I had twenty-six or something. Yeah, it was something like that. This is something else I, I think I think the uh, one uh, the the first street stock race, man. I think you were running twenty. 26 because it was right after the uh, Boston Marathon bombing, yeah? Yeah, and they run 26 miles, so they did something with that. That was at Oxford, and I ran second behind Mike. And then Mike's car, like, ended up in the stands or something like that. <laughs> some some rare one-off thing only could happen to Mike. <laughs> he has had the worst fucking luck this season, man. Fucking little light pole snaps and falls on his car. He's me of last year. <laughs> yeah. God, I remember that, Clay. Yeah, always, always ended up on his roof last year. You see, it's funny. You keep, I do it too, but like saying year as in like last year, and it was just like nine weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> when you only do one race a week. Yeah. I'm excited to. Uh, I was thinking. One of these one-offs that we do on the Wednesdays, it would be sweet if we could have run uh, mods and late models together, but mods are just a little bit too much, a little too fast. Or you could add some weight to them, but I just think it would be neat to uh, mix them up. But... Nope. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Nah. <laughs> we could run, uh, like, what was that? What was the trailer hitch race or, or whatever? Was it Chris or Derek that did it? Yeah, Derek was saying it was at uh, Daytona and it was Legends and Trucks. And the truck basically pushed the Legends car around the track. That is some backwoods shit right there. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> that is some hillbilly bullshit right there. Anybody buy that new Kia yet? Hell no. <laughs> what is this? Paul has just sent something into the chat. I oh, know Clay I, Snyder. Clay Snyder did. Uh oh. <laughs> How do what? you even view the chat? Uh, this this isn't gonna be good. Yeah, uh, I I I know I hope what this might be, but I have a feeling it's probably not. You know. Don't spoil it. I haven't looked at it yet. It's the bottom it. half of that picture uh, uh, that's your uh, profile in Skype, Jesse. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Is this mother and mother and daughter? No. Dude, that would be awkward if it was. <laughs> I don't know how it feels if that was my mom and daughter. It is, it is uh, comforting to see them both wearing cowboy hats, though. Yeah, it's, it's cold. you got to wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it is cold. I like, the, done. I like the lens flare on the on the beads there. That's a nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> is this, was that your camper? What is that? No, they sent that to me. And okay. how does Mrs. Snyder feel about this? <laughs> I showed her. She's fine with that. <laughs> so, wait, how did they send them send that to you? Cause I got their number. We saw them at the track. Oh, I see. Hey, Clay. What, Paul? Clay. <laughs> oh yeah, that uh, I should take that and just put. Um, couple little black boxes on there and use that as the uh, <laughs> the still image for the uh... yeah but no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that because that's womp womp. that's a uh, i'm fine i'll do it i don't give a shit but <laughs> i just uh didn't think that that would be uh that necessary get that that fucking thing that you put on the last one <laughs> was all right that thing that you put on the last one that's all <laughs> 
Was that a girl or a guy? Even? That's a guy. Did you did you ever see that video? No. What that what that's from? Uh uh-uh. uh. Alrighty, let me see if I can dig that out of my history here. <laughs> Any chance that's the uh, video I, I reposted from somebody about the guy that just goes nuts over a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Did you yeah. get that picture, Matt? Because it oh. says one failed. That'd be me. I haven't seen it. You gotta look at it. You got to, man. It says uh, zero bites, so it never came through correctly. Oh, I would imagine there was some biting going on with those two. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I'll send it again, Matt. <laughs> nice. While Clay is using the internet to transmit pornography. <laughs> Uh, should, should we segue into the big news that came out after uh, Wednesday Night's Race? What was that? The Tour Mod Series. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Um, we're, we're officially replacing these one-off non-points races that we run on Wednesday nights with a uh, regular Tour Mod Series that will launch on June 26th. June, yeah, June 26th. It will be a 10-week 11 p.m. open setup. It'll be just like our other two fixed, our other two uh, feature series, feature divisions. It's going to be called for people that give a shit. It's going to be called the uh, Sarah Modified Championship Series. Um, we're going to run uh, Thompson, Stafford, Oxford, uh, New Hampshire. We're going to run the Irwindale Outer, uh, Charlotte Legends Oval. New Smyrna, Langley, South Boston, and we'll wrap it up on August 28th with uh, Bristol. Um, all the tracks and all the uh, lap counts I took right from the Wheel and Modified, uh, the Wheel and Southern, uh, the Valenti, and the Lucas Oil Series. The only one that's not part of a, reg- a regular tour is the uh, New Smyrna, and that's the uh, Florida Cracker 200 that they run down there every summer. Um so it's going to be the Tour Mod car. We're not messing around with the SKs. It's going to be open set up. Uh, Mike Mellinger has been championing this call since he since the day he joined. He's wanted a Tour Mod series. So um, it's going to happen in uh, Season 4. Uh, Mike's wanted to share setups for guys that want to run and maybe don't want to put, you know, don't know where to get started. But uh, it's what's all that blipping? Is, is Clay sending more porno? <laughs> no, we're just... Uh... They're just talking about it. Um, if she's not Clay, she wastes some money on them. But, uh... Yeah, I like the modified schedule. Um, I'm, all, I'm all for the short track stuff, so I think the modifieds are a good add for the series. Um we didn't quite get the car count we wanted for the trucks, I don't think. So I think the short track stuff uh, bringing a lot of people. Um, hopefully, we get some of these guys like us to uh, join up in the mods as well. But maybe get some of the new guys that run the official stuff there. And I think the variance of laps and tracks and everything, I think it's all pretty good. I think one thing that would help with the mods is uh, I know uh, Mike is more than willing to give his uh, his mod setups to anybody that wants them. So I think we should definitely make that known to people because um, I think that was one of the things with the trucks is I think the trucks have a good following, but it seems like it's it's with people that are already running with a league that they know. Um, nobody, I don't think there are many people looking to join a truck league or anything like that. You know, I think the people that are into it are already happy in a league, and uh, the trucks are hard to set up anyway, so... I think, yeah, if, I, think uh, I think most of the leagues I know about that are truck series are fixed, so I yeah, it's, difference too. Yeah, so I think that was kind of one of the things, but I think if we have the if we have the mods and we are more than willing to share Mike's base setups with whoever, then that could probably be pretty conducive to uh getting some new faces. Yeah, and I mean with with the trucks, it was a thing where. You know, with the, the street stocks and, and the late models are short track cars, and we run a short track series. And the the trucks were getting into longer longer tracks. We had a couple of mile, mile and a halfers on there. And it just, we, I just started to get away from what what makes this league work. So 
we dumped them and we're we're uh, kind of getting back to where, where we focus is a strict short track organization. And I think, you know, it, it, the, if you look at the schedule, it's all tracks. It's all tracks that by the end of this this late model season will have run. So you know, I'm not gonna guys aren't gonna have to go out and drop fifty or sixty bucks on new tracks. You know, all they got to do is buy the car and start running laps. Um, so you know, hopefully we'll have some more of our regulars come out. You bring in some of the, some of the guys that run the official uh, mod series, and you know, I think I, I think we've got a pretty good shot at having pretty good car counts for next year, next season. Yeah, definitely. Mods are fun to drive too. I've never, I think I've done like one race with them. I've done a lot of practice with them, just dicking around, and they are a lot of fun to drive. They can be a little bit of a handful because they got a lot more power. So I think the first time I did one was at Thompson, and you could drive it in the corner a lot deeper than the late model, but you had to be a little bit easier coming off just so you could power that thing around. Yeah. And you're doing the ones that are more horsepower, right? The two yeah. Four mods, correct? Yeah. And um, you know, I mean, it's every every race that we have, it's it's based on an actual uh, tour mod race. So I mean, it's it's going to be races that guys are familiar with. And even when you go when you go to the website, I mean, I even took the the event names. Like the uh, event in New Hampshire is the Town Fair 100. You know, the the race uh, up there in July is the Town Fair Tire 100. So you know, it's it'll just just adding a little bit to to the sim realism of what we do that we're actually running real races some of those races are so long there might actually be some chance for some green flag pit stops which i don't think we've ever had have we not on purpose yeah yeah usually we get pretty lucky with a caution and yeah that would be sweet though we're guys just limp around until they get yellow because that one in that one 200 laps yeah yeah the new smyrna race Jesus. Yep. We've got a couple 150 lappers. The, the, the Charlotte, uh, the Charlotte race is 150 laps, but that's the Legends oval, so there's there's no way we're gonna have green flag stops on that one. That one might be a long race, and not for the laps either, for the cautions. Yeah. <laughs> that pit yeah. road doesn't even make any sense anyway. It really doesn't. I, I do. Do any of you guys know how do do the Legends even buy? Is it are there any pits on the Legends cars when they race there? On the on the actual track, I doubt it. Yeah, so I don't even know why they. I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's what that's what I really dislike about i racing is that they, you know, every track has to have pits for pit stops, and you know, just you know, especially with the short track stuff. I mean, you know, so many so many races happen where you know you go out there and you run until you break or you win. You know, so I don't know. Just just another just another bitch I've got about the service, but. I can't. I wish they would add backfires already, like visible backfires. I wish they would give me some fucking tools so I can add in these races right. I'm pretty sure like that trying. that um, thread they put up in the league thing that you've been replying to so much. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure every day they get on there and they see a new post by Paul Myers. Like, God damn it, this guy get. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's good they're making that post and getting some feedback from it because. Yeah. You all, you all, you had a lot of stuff that you put in there, and there's also some other good ideas that everyone else has. I think if they can incorporate a lot of that stuff, it'll be pretty good for you and the people running the league. If they can incorporate a third of what a couple of us have suggested, you know, there's there's one there's a uh, Irish guy in there that, that's put up a lot of good ideas. Uh, Colin McLean uh, from the ISRA has put up some really good ideas. But I mean, if if they just, you know. At, to admin these races, I think they just expect that people race in races that they admin, so they really haven't given us any tools. But you know, the, the thing the thing that was really frustrating, like I think everybody really suggested the heat race or the uh, or the um, V8 Supercar style multi race or multi sprint format, and they're like, well, you can kind of do that now at the tournaments and. and it, that isn't the answer because to set up a race like that, you know, 
since I'm buying sessions in bulk, they, they cost me 70 cents for a two hour session, but I would have to do a session for every heat race. So that's just call it three bucks a uh, session for every, um, for every you know, C or B main. So that's another two bucks or five bucks, six bucks a night to race, uh, to race a, a heat style short track show. And, you know, running, that's 60 bucks a division per season. I'm not, I'm not going to absorb, you know, I love you guys, but I'm not absorbing all that fucking cost. Just (laughs) let me, just let me do it out of a single session and charge me, charge me two bucks. I'll do that. You know, they're they're fucking, they're out of their minds if they think guys that run regular league races are going to put that kind of money into, into hosting sessions. For that kind of money, I'll just go buy an R, R factor server. I've never even played that game. Sorry, Sim. I downloaded it for the dirt stuff, which is kind of fun. It's just, I don't know, it's not that realistic. Oh. Yeah, I think if we can get the, the heat race stuff in there, that'd be pretty cool because I know most series, they do heat races, um, either heat races or hot, or time trials, but like ACT, uh, the past series, all the ones up here in the north, they do heat races, so yeah. that would make for a good show. Just those alone, and then obviously the race. These are all heat races. Yeah. You know, like when you, you, have when to you finish up the, the, track, the, house, the house division is always doing the heat races. And that's, you know, that, that would make more sense. If we can do it if we can do it that way, where we've got heats and then your feature, first of all, that feature winner sticker is going to make more sense. But secondly, I can bring the I can bring the race lengths down, and we can drop the fast repair and 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 uh, you know give guys a lap penalty for for pitting and make, and run it like a real steel short track show. I think heats would definitely be awesome because <laughs> everybody yeah. wants it. Everybody wants it. The problem is that the way I racing is giving it to us, it's going to cost me six bucks a night to do it, and I you know I'm committed to to not charging. To run to run SARA, I'm not I'm not going to charge <clears throat> to run my show because you're already paying for your for your uh, monthly service fee. You're already spending money for the traction. You're already spending money for the cars. I'm not going to charge guys to to race. Plus, if we start getting money involved, then we're really going to see guys put the cow pusher on their car. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, I, I'm just. They they need to do it in a way where first of all we're not doing it in multiple sessions where you guys can get lost trying to figure out where your next race session is, and I'm just not gonna I'm just not gonna spend five or six bucks a night to do it. That that league that Mike turned me on to and Ray runs in and Sean um, they do heat races and it actually works out pretty well. Everybody's got to pay attention to what's going on though, because they just take the green flag, and then everyone pulls into the pits. And they pull, and then they call out the heat, whoever's in whatever heat, and you don't pay attention at all to what position it's in. Just the admin watches. So I mean, it'd be a little hard, but it's. I would doable. need spotters to do that because I was thinking, I was thinking tonight about like for um, for like the for the two fifty for the Oxford two fifty that we're planning to run. I was thinking about how many people it would take to spot that race so that I could run it as. You know, a uh, no yellows, but instead of 250 laps, maybe do it as a 500 lap session, and then have a guy in uh, a Mustang as a pace car, and just call, just verbally call yellow, and do it that way. This way, we're tracking, we're tracking laps, but we can, uh, we can not count yellow flag laps and. Just sitting, just sitting down, thinking about it, it, it the, the logistics of it is just a fucking nightmare because you would need three or four spotters, you would need a pit row guy, you would need a lap counter. It's it's a lot. It, it would take a lot of people not racing to make that work. That already sounds like a mess. It, it who, is. Yeah. who wants to even do those jobs? Yeah. Like who wants to sit at a computer screen and count laps? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. Exactly. Now I know, like uh, Paul Boswell had sent me a message, and and I, you know, I know I've told you guys about it. He's running a one-off race this Sunday. He's doing it's called the Lakeland or the Lakeland 100. He's doing a hundred lapper at uh, USA. Late models. Uh, yeah, late models. 
but he's got his crew from Montgomery Motor Speedway uh, working the track on on for this show. So like he's got he's got his guys that are gonna that are gonna spot for him and and uh, basically act as his track stewards. So you know I mean maybe a couple times a year I could I, I'm actually thinking about talking to Paul about maybe bringing his team on to do the 250 and maybe doing it that way but you know to ask to ask guys to do that two three nights a week it, it's just nobody you, nobody would do it so the the bottom line is i racing needs to give league admins the tools to run to run shows right I mean, they've got to give us at the very least. They got to give us the option for a green for a uh, green white checker at the very least. If they if they don't give us uh, not counting yellow flag laps. Yeah, it's it's really kind of surprising that all that shit isn't in there. Like green white checker, not counting yellows, and it's almost even a little surprising that heat races aren't in there because heat races are such a huge part of like all like late models, street stocks, modifieds. Like the smaller kind of divisions, like especially on the all the small tracks that iRacing has, it's such a huge part of that whole thing, and it's just gonna. Well, I mean, it, it it might be one of those things that, where it's you know, it's how it runs in real life, but you know, it does, you don't really need to have it in the sim or whatever. But I think it'd be nice. The bottom line is, and you know, I've said it before, but this this service is built towards towards a non-hardcore sim public. It's built for the average guy who will go out and spend 40 bucks on a steering wheel and sit down and race for fun. This this service isn't built for guys like Randy Shrek who put a thousand laps on the car before a weekly free race. Well, I think it, I think it caters nicely to both. Like, I don't think this is, um, like, uh, anybody that gets into iRacing, you know, there's a subscription fee involved. You're gonna pay a lot of money out for tracks, and anybody that's gonna use a forty dollar wheel isn't serious about it anyway. And you know, but I think it caters nicely to the people that just want to have something to do in their spare time, or it, or people like Randy that want to put a thousand laps working on a setup, and then you can, you know, there's tons of different shit, all kinds of different shit you can do. So I don't, I don't think it's for the lame per. I don't think it's for like the uh, the casual sim racer or anything like that. I I would say it's the best stock car sim period. Yeah, I mean it, they they do they do a really good job of of they built a really deep game. But you know when when you get when you get into when you get into the hardcore side of who's it, in the train yard? <laughs> that that'd be me. <laughs> I, I live across the street from a uh, set of tracks. Oh, but um. I mean, you know, when when you transition from from playing a game, and I'm gonna call iRacing a game because when you're playing online, it's not it's not a game. It's not a sim. It's a game. You know, when netcode issues get involved, it's it's not a sim. <coughs> but, uh, I hate you both. <laughs> um, like when when you when you transition from the game to the competitive side. You know, you've get you've got to build the competitive side yourself, and iRacing doesn't give us tools to build to build a real competition. You know, we've got to do it ourselves. We've got to use sites like Dan Lisa for Stat Track, and we've got to we've got we've got to uh, jury rig. You know, our, we've got to jury rig live qualifying like like Paul's going to do this Sunday, and we've got to uh, we've got to figure workarounds to their insistence on counting yellow flag laps. And I know the only reason that they that they count yellow flag laps in everything is because when you get into, you know, your street stock, fixed set, D, license, or, you know, rookie license, um, regular official series races, if you didn't count yellow flag laps, you would still be running the first race you sat down on. So they just haven't bothered to give the advanced tools yet. So. Yeah, I think I think the green white checker and – being able to turn off counting yellow flag laps. It, it seems like that's one of those things that will be inevitable over time. But you got to remember you know, how much these guys must have on their plate, you know, because they got just so much other shit built into the sim that is constantly being refined and, and you know, programmers working on such minute details and et cetera, et cetera. So it's, I mean, you got you to gotta kind of choose what's going to take priority and, I, don't know, I feel like over time they'll probably start 
addressing a lot of small things that people are constantly complaining about or wishing for. But Yeah, I mean, you know, it's... I understand that, you know, they, they had a really nice package with uh, NASCAR in 2003 that they started with, and then they launched that, and they started they, they started working on two different angles. They started uh, catching up on where it should be, and then they, they also started moving forward with adding cars and tracks and everything else. So I imagine they've got two development teams, one for working on the core game and then one for adding the uh, just – call it DLC for, you know, ease, but like, you know, you've, you've advanced a lot with it, with the DLC. You've got a ton of tracks. You've got a ton of cars. You've got a lot of cool shit that you can, that you can run with, but a lot of the core functionality that the guys who are spending all the money that, that are in the hundred percent club and, and are taking it as seriously as a sim, some of the core functionality is still lacking. So, you know, maybe, in, maybe instead of going out and, and putting up, you know, Indy Raceway Park, instead of putting up, um, you know, Bathurst, and instead of putting up the tracks that they've got scanned that they're programming, maybe they should just focus on getting the core functionality where it needs to be, and then going out and, and putting up a bunch of new tracks. Because I don't think that, I don't think they've got the I don't think they've got the uh, user base yet to really support all of the fucking content they've got. I don't know. I have to see the numbers. I, I... Because there was a period of time where they weren't profitable, but I mean, I, th- I think they've got to be approaching that point, the break-even point, or even making money. I mean, if one thing that is a mystery to me is, like, you watch a NASCAR race on Sunday, and they'll do a plug for fucking NASCAR the game inside line, that it's like fucking Mario Kart version of a NASCAR game, and it's not realistic in any way, shape, or form. And the multiplayer is just broken, and it's like, why? Why doesn't iRacing push to get that plug a little more than some shitty console game? And you know, it's fucking NASCAR sank so many NASCAR sanctioned divisions within iRacing, and then you know, you never really hear about it. Trevor Bain, or not Trevor Bain, uh, Travis Pastrana mentioned it uh, during the Nationwide race uh, the other day. That was kind of cool, but it's like, you know, you mention it once or twice, or you know, kind of show show somebody using it or something like that, and I don't know. Especially since think... the most popular driver in NASCAR used to do it all the time. Yeah. You'd think that'd be a pretty uh, good marketing tool. I I, th- I think it comes down to, um, you know, iRacing's NASCAR division, I don't think is, well, I- I'll guarantee it's not as profitable for NASCAR it, as NASCAR the game is. Because NASCAR the game, they're, get, they're getting a, they're, they got a licensing fee from whoever the developer is. And they're getting a percentage royalty check for every game they sell. What you know, are are is NASCAR getting a piece of the action when I buy a session? You know, I think if Na- if NASCAR is just giving free plugs to NASCAR the game, it's because they're getting a piece of the pie. And if iRacing wants to play with the big boys, they're either gonna have to give up, they're gonna have to give up a share of what they got, or they're just gonna have to pony up and buy ad time. Yeah, one of, one of my buddies he messaged me the other day and he's like, "Hey, do you still you still do i racing?" And I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Ah, I fucking race like three four nights a week." And he's like, "Oh, because I just got a new processor and it gave me three months free of i racing." And I was like, oh, "That's pretty sweet." So I guess Intel's running a special right now where you buy a certain CPU and you get three months for free. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyhow, it's getting uh, to be that hour or that time. Have we been talking about the race tonight at all? It was no. good. A lot of left-hand turns. Yep. A lot of left-hand turns. A couple, couple, guys, couple guys ran out front. A couple guys got left. <laughs> Justin Rose now picked the... Is it Rose now or Rosa now? Is it... Rose now. Rose now. Just on Rose now. Now, if Justin wins next Thursday, he'll have swept the uh, the New England swing. The wicked. Little, the, the wicked... <laughs> I, I built in a little uh, mini tour inside the tour. I put all the uh, New England tracks right together in the middle of the season, and he uh, he's three for three so far. So you New Englanders are going to have to do something about that Michigan boy running all over your tracks. Maybe next week we'll have something for him. I did pretty well at New Hampshire. Maybe somebody's just going to have to spin him. 
put him in the old spin cycle. That can be arranged. <laughs> oh. Seems like he's going to be in the new target here before long. But the, Paul's going to want somebody to take him out instead of Chris. <laughs> And that's the thing, man. Like we get, we got a, we got a bunch of new fast drivers, but Justin, uh, Christ, he's got a ninety, he's got a ninety-six point lead on uh, Jared Boyros, and and Boyros is a fucking rocket every week. Yeah, Justin's fast as hell. He really Paul, is. Paul I always wondered whenever we've had new guys, like it hasn't been a while, but he used to say just the goal is to uh, put the ninety-three C in the fence. <laughs> If one of those new guys would have thought you were serious and did that, you you couldn't have done much, right? Because I mean, you did say that. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think everybody knew that it was in jest. But some people, you never you can't give you can't give people in general too much credit. Exactly, because they're not terribly bright. No, Pe- people are far and away dumb animals. <laughs> that would that would be kind of a funny race though you know give chris like go to uh kind of a longer track maybe like uh new hampshire or something like that and uh give chris because you obviously you could wreck him on the first turn if you wanted to give chris like a three or four second head start off the green and only object of the race is just run him down and try to put him into the wall <laughs> isn't that what that crash car series is about yeah, I've ran that a couple times. It's a lot of fun. They do like I was looking at that today, and they do weird shit. Like they'll put uh they'll pull four cars on track, and it'll be like a street stock, the SK mod, the the jet the uh, the Solstice, and then the McLaren. Yeah, like, last no, last night's at Bristol, it was the uh, Cadillac. I think the street stock, the Kia. I think, and then the. Uh, the F1 car. <laughs> <laughs> Just who gets high and comes up with these car combinations? I don't know. <clears throat> Weird shit. Did I tell you guys I'm going to the Indy 500? Facebook did. Yeah, I saw that earlier. Good Good sweet. Yeah, and if uh, hopefully if all goes well with that, We'll be able to go back to Indy for the Brickyard the following following month. You'll be able to see the cars for about 15 seconds. Hey, it's and free. Then I'm not in com- for a minute. It is a totally free trip, so I am not complaining. When's your uh, When's your gig at Unity start? Uh same um, same weekend as the Indy 500. Outstanding. But uh, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be. On uh, I'm gonna be in Indianapolis getting wasted because we're we're arriving Thursday, so we're taking pretty much all day Thursday and Friday because we don't have to do because my buddy he's working the show and I'm I'm his assistant and uh, we're not doing anything until Saturday, so we're getting there Thursday afternoon and we've got all day Thursday and Friday to uh, drink as much free beer as we can and then do work. Right on. Hey, by the way. Uh, if anybody knows somebody that's interested, uh, Jesse, I talked to you about this a little bit, but uh, instead of doing a um, ETV style broadcast, what I want to do is I want to bring somebody in that'll basically just be a track announcer and uh, call the races on a Twitch uh, stream out of the uh, out of the spectate session and uh, just kind of do it that way rather than spending. Eight trillion dollars a week on uh, <laughs> on broadcasting. I'm gonna I'm gonna email that guy that we were talking to. I'm gonna see see where he stands on that because he seemed like he was he was down. Yeah. I, I meant to email him before the race started tonight, but I forgot. But uh, I'm gonna. I'm sitting on the session on Tuesday and he didn't, so I, I think he was on board right up until I emailed him for some reason. No, I I think he probably just forgot. He's a uh, I think he works kind of late too. I'm not sure. I'll email him again, but. Um, don't want to name names or anything, but yeah, um, I'll email them again and see if maybe we can, uh, make something happen maybe for the street stock show on Tuesday or, or whatever, whatever day is good for him. Cool. Did you quit recording the races on Twitch, Jesse? Yeah. Since I got triples, it's, um, not quite as easy to do anymore. Cause oh. I, I used to run iRacing in just a window, just a window version. And, uh, I used to just stream it that way. 
But now it's like, I don't do it in window. I do it full screen now. And when it's full screen, you can't really tell it to record a single screen region. Yeah, I can't tell it to just record the first one or the middle monitor instead of all three. Right. So I was going to look and see if there's any any alternatives to uh, XSplit. So I could, because I do, I did like, I do like recording them because my my dad liked to watch them and shit like that. And plus, I had some of my buddies would usually watch every single night. Like I'd usually have three or four people watching. So it's something I do want to do again. I just got to figure it out. I usually watch them the next day. I mean, we used to have a bunch of people that did videos, but then that kind of... I mean, I know it takes a long time, but it was nice being able to see a recap, because... Yeah, we used to have three or four people broadcasting each race. Yeah, and if Lola I, with the recaps, and Jesse did the recaps for a while. Yeah, if I didn't if I hadn't gone to triples, I'd still be streaming them, but yeah, I'll see. I keep meaning to uh, figure it out, but... It's pretty taxing on the old system when you got when you're rendering three different screens and then you want to go and screen capture one of them and. How are the triples? It's awesome. <laughs> it's uh, definitely nice to be able to see the peripherals without actually having to look left or look right in the sim, you know. Yeah. Like when you, you can actually see when somebody's at your door on either side and um, you can kind of. You can kind of see down into the turns a little bit better, like so, like when you're coming into a turn, usually you can kind of see like the back stretch or something like that, or you can right. kind of see yourself in the turn a little easier and spot wrecks easier and stuff like that. It's just, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make you much better. It just kind of it's a better experience, I think. It's just, and plus it's just awesome. My card will handle it, but I just don't know if I want to spend the money. You want to spend the money. Yeah, you do. I don't know. I, Sam, I, think it's, I think it's a case that Clay wants to spend the money, but Mrs. Snyder doesn't want to spend the money. Well, I got then i got to buy a new desk because my desk won't fit two more monitors. Then I might as well just buy a whole new rig, you know. You might as well it's buy just, a new house. It's, it's a never-ending thing. That was the problem I had. My desk was so small I couldn't get triples if I wanted to, but then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to try it because Sam's Club had a really good deal on some 27-inch LEDs. For like two fifty a piece, and uh, so I just kind of went for it. And then, coincidentally, like a couple weeks later, my work we got these all new desks and everything. So they were giving away our old desks, which are huge, and I claimed one of them like as soon as I said they were just gonna give them away. So now I get this big sweet ass desk, and it didn't cost me a cent. Nah. I uh, I'm just wondering if any of you guys have seen what. Slop ass setup. Chris Roberts is kicking off. <laughs> the <head>. Yes, <laughs> yes. With his like 13 inch monitor. He's got like he's got like a 13 inch EGA monitor and a lawn chair, and he is just whooping all of your asses in street stocks. He's just good, man. He's just naturally got it. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how he can turn turn the wheel with all the soda cans he's got. Oh shit. <laughs> That should be the, that should be the still image. No, he probably wouldn't like that actually. No, the, mo- the monitor's like better. three he, feet he above his head. Watch right now. Say what? Say what, Paul? He probably doesn't have time to watch right now. He's too busy breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It's it's kind of a funny set. It's such a tiny ass. It's like there are so many like empty bottles on the thing, and there's like a remote control car sitting on top of a fucking jar of peanuts, and it's like. The monitor is like two feet above his above his yeah. keyboard. It's, Everything just must fall over. Like car gets loose and he tries to catch it. This fucking thing just. <laughs> God, God forbid he's got force feedback up on that wheel of his. Bring the whole operation to a crashing halt. He does. There's a G27. Probably he's a... that's the thing on that desk. Anyway. So yeah, let's probably wrap it up there. It's getting late. That note. Oh, you know what we haven't done in a while, Jesse? What? We haven't given the entire service gonorrhea, and we haven't talked about Mike's grandma. Well, I gave Mike's grandma... What? We have lost her two podcast traditions already. (laughs) I think I made the conscious conscious decision to stop talking about Mike's grandma because, you know, because we got Ken that runs with us, we got Mike that runs with us, you know. I don't want to... Because I'm not a nice person and I'm really offensive by nature. <laughs> I just don't. I don't want those two things to mix. 
Good call. Probably safer that way. Yeah, probably. Because I, I enjoy running with Mike and Ken, and I don't want them coming up here and putting me in a body bag. It's only Put a few hours. Put me in a body bag! <laughs> Hilarious. Anyhow, that wraps up week six. Six, yeah. We turned the corner. We're on the clubhouse turn, right? Yes, sir. One race to go before the All-Star race. Can't wait. It's going to be such a fun weekend, man. Paul, you have so many sports analogies that I've never heard of before. Like, you have a you have a way to say so many different sports sayings, or I guess al- analogies or metaphors that I fucking never even heard. I think you make them up. I totally do not. But I've worked pretty much in every sport now, so I've... You know, you, you keep your ears open in locker rooms and you pick shit up. I like the term wheelhouse in term, when you're using it in a, in a sport uh, syntax. I like gong show. I like calling things gong shows. I like song show. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen your old lady. I won't mind a song show either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> Anyway, so we'll uh, fucking wrap it up. Fucking wrap it up, then. It's, it's almost three in the morning. Got to get up for work in five hours. No big. Whatever. I got to be at work in five hours. Ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. It's Friday. You're not getting anything done. Hey, Matt, can you see? I was wondering this in the race last night. Can you see your office from, like, the sim? <laughs> like, uh, when... um, Technically, yeah, probably. That's what I was wondering. I up there. I was going to make some remark last night in the session, like, um, if you look close, when you're driving by the, the scoring tower, you can actually see Matt up there. Like, they got they got a 3D version of Matt up there making cool <laughs> shit. But I was too busy winning the race, so I didn't have time. <laughs> God. <laughs> too busy trying to hold off Justin Rose now for your life. True, dude. I was sweating so bad. Like, session ended and everything. I like, took off my headset and like the ear moths were like soaked with sweat and I was like wiping sweat off my I had, like sweat rolling down my face and my shirt was damp. You don't notice until you're done with a raise either. Yeah, I know. That's how I felt after Iowa. Yeah, Iowa was the same way. It was fucking yeah. Iowa I felt like I just got off like a eight hour shift, like working on my feet all day or something. I was so tired. Tonight was pretty tiring too. Tonight was I had to watch every every inch of the track for somebody that make sure you didn't hit them. Or get run over. Yeah, right. I'm not gonna go there. I'll stay away from that topic. Hey, real quick, Matt, did uh did you get that picture that we were talking about last night? Picture from last night. Remember the uh picture the the photo op that we were discussing? You'll have to remind me what it is. Now I can't I, now I forget. Well you you said you have access to the uh to the, to the video <laughs> board. I know what you're talking about, yeah. So, uh, I probably could have done it today if I remembered, but I didn't even think of it. There was actually no cars on track today. It would have been perfect. Right, terrible. Uh, but tomorrow, the uh, those lemon cars are going to be there. Paul's trying to get me to take a picture of the, our scoring pylons at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway with uh, the Sarah logo or an All Star Race logo or something up there. I might have oh, to. That would be awesome. How awesome would that be? If, how how badass would that be on the Facebook page? That would be the tits. Yeah. <laughs> That I'll would, see what I can do. If Matt's going to come home from work tomorrow, his Facebook status is going to say, like, no longer works at New Hampshire Motor <laughs> Speedway. <laughs> Updating LinkedIn profile. Matt, did you get the picture that Clay sent into the chat? No, that didn't, uh, didn't come through. I'm not too worried about it. I've seen enough. It was tits. <laughs> I, yeah, I've seen enough of those. <laughs> Let's see. I'll give you the cliff notes. It was tits. <laughs> Give you the, the the too long didn't read. It was knockers. Nice. It was boobs. <laughs> Sweater cows. <laughs> Some airbags. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, I guess that's it for us. <laughs> <laughs> we may or may I'm not be. No. <laughs> so. Uh, so thanks for joining us, Matt and Clay. No problem. Always nice thanks to have me. 
That was, was fun. That? A little off topic, but it was fun. That's how these things roll. I know. I figured it out by now. <laughs> if people didn't like it, they wouldn't watch or listen or i looked into uh, actually setting it up all legit like through the itunes store and everything but it wanted me to download itunes and that i will not do <laughs> it's free <laughs> i know it's free I, I hate that program so much i i saw it was like step one download itunes fucking close nope. the tab <laughs> right there <laughs> <laughs> it's like fucking uh i, I had to uh, rejoin myspace a couple months ago because i wanted to share this song and like to share a song off MySpace, you have to be a member of MySpace. So I log in or whatever, set up a real quick account, set, share the song, and I go. I'm like, oh well, let's see what MySpace is about. I, and it says you have two friends, Tom and Nickelback. I deleted the account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's like I didn't really read much into it. I don't know if I really do have to download iTunes, but. I wasn't impressed that that was like the first step. It was like, no, nah, there's no way I'm doing that. I'll just use YouTube and whatever. We do a podcast at the Speedway, or I don't, but a couple of my buddies do. Um, after he's done editing the clip or whatever, it takes literally probably two minutes for up to upload to iTunes. And once it's up there, you can download it immediately. It's a, I think it's a fairly easy process as long as you actually download the program, but uh, <laughs> it shouldn't be too bad. That's the biggest barrier of entry for me <laughs> is actually downloading the software. No, I just, I can't stand that program. I could nerd rage about it, but I won't. <laughs> I'll spare you. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Week, week six, six is in the books. Huh. Week seven, the uh, street stockers are at South Boston for 75 laps, and the uh, late models go to New Hampshire for the uh, first of... Uh, a couple of races up there next week. How many laps is that at New Hampshire? Um, I don't know. Hang on. I think it's 75. It should be the same. My next three late model races are Can-Am this Sunday, 100 laps at New Hampshire, Thursday night's race, 75 laps in New Hampshire, the All-Star race, 75 laps in New Hampshire. I think we might do one more Wednesday night race in New Hampshire just so uh, guys can get that extra practice in. I'm ready for a uh, modified me too. Wednesday night fun race. Me too. We'll, we'll do them uh, week eight, nine, and ten. That's that works. Be. And then, uh, then we we'll get rolling with that. That'll be fun. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, do that. <laughs> we got to get that sewer speedway race going, Jesse. Yeah. No, I'm. When most of the time when Derek and I end up in a in a carb cup race together, it's like he'll message me. And he was like, hey, you want to do the carb cup in five minutes? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And like, just yesterday, I just gotten out of the shower and I sit down at my computer and Picks. I message from. What? Picks. Picks. All right, hold on. <laughs> no, I just like sit down and Derek's like, hey, I'm doing carb cup. And it was like two minutes until registration closed. So I like fucking went and changed real quick. And yeah. So I, I never know. Like, we never really coordinated outside of five minutes ahead of time. But. But no, I would I would be definitely down for a super speedway action. Maybe we'll just do a hosted session sometime, or just join Carb Cup together. Because I'm just, I'm quite certain that we would all get in the same split because it is fucking mouth breathers in those things. That yeah, is the worst shit you've ever seen. But so I, I'm certain that if we all did one at the same time, we'd get into the same split. But uh, yeah, it's 3:05 in the morning. So how about we uh, go to bed together? Ten four. Thank, thank God. Thank God for Central Time. Yeah. Well. Uh, no. Thank God for titties. Yeah, I'm inclined. I'm inclined to agree with that. Yes. Yeah, I can't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> the man makes a good point. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll uh, we'll wrap this up, and uh, we'll see you guys next week on the. On the oval. All right. Gay. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye bye. See ya. Sounds tits. <laughs> <laughs>